All right. Um, where are we? 844-940-2774. Seems like this is like spirit day. We got another call about a spiritual question from Michelle. I love the spiritual questions. Keep coming. Keep them coming. My favorite topic. Um, Michelle's calling us from Chicago. And Michelle, I want to welcome Hi. you to the program. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you, Dr. Tom. Oh, you and uh, Henry Cloud. Sorry. Hello. Yes, I'm here. Hi. Yes, I'm here. Okay. There you are. You came back. Yes. Hi. Hi. How can I help can you? Can you hear me? Hi. I can hear you. Yes. I can. Um, okay, good. <laughs> um, I thank you so much for having this show, and I'm so glad I got through. Um, oh, you're very welcome. If you could get a little uh, closer to your microphone, it might help. You're a little faint. Okay. How is that? Is that better? We'll see. Okay. So t tell me your question. Okay. Is that better? How about that? That's pretty good there. Okay, awesome. Okay, hi again. I'm sorry about that. Um, is it clear now? It's great. Okay, awesome. Okay, he's like, get to the question. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so, um, uh, <laughs> all right. So I grew up in foster care. I grew up in group home, and I, you know, somehow, some way, um, I, you know, went off and I got a full ride scholarship. Wow. Overcome all those you know, things that got me there and went off to college. And I have three beautiful children. Um, I, at the age of 32, um, uh, we lost our son. He was two years old. So oh. now my children are, um, you know, the, it's been almost 10 years next week that he has passed away. My son, Joshua, our first one. And so I am sorry. so I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know whether to say thank you or I appreciate that. Um, he, um, I guess I'm just, I'm so angry. I'm so angry with God, not in general. I still, obviously, as you could tell, I'm still very just kind of a happy person. Um, I have two beautiful, healthy children and I guess I'm just, I'm angry because, and I'm not really trusting of God right now because I have been through so much in my life. I, I'm just waiting for the next shoe to drop. And mm -hmm. I know I didn't make it through all that I have gone through just by myself. I realize that. And I know yeah. that my relationship is very uh, deep and I sense that God is saying, it's okay to be angry at me. But at the same time, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm glad you think it's okay to be angry, but when are you going to take another child of mine? Mm. And why, what, 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 what did I do? Why, why did I, what, please don't. And so every single day, and you can probably hear them in the background. I'm sorry. Um, just yes. when is it going to, I guess, I mean, do you see what I'm like? I'm just scared. It is the yeah, worst thing in the world to lose a child. And, you know, I can't, I literally, Michelle, I literally cannot imagine a pain worse. I, I just can't. It's awful. It's yeah. after everything I'd been through, you know, in foster care in the group home, you don't just get there for, oh, because, you know, people were good to you. No, they weren't. Um, right. But there's n no pain greater than losing your child. There's nothing I, I had ever gone I, through in life. Um, I believe you. So I, okay. Anyhow. Sorry. So tell me, <laughs> tell me how I can help. Okay, I'm I'm finding it very difficult to let that control. Go, like I, I have the thought of in my mind, in my heart, and in my soul, the the control of letting my kids and letting my heart just be settled every day. Like mm -hmm. not worry. I want. I need help in settling my heart and my mind. Nothing is going to happen to my kids. And it's no mainly about have. mainly about your kids. Yes, like I know right. me, I know, but I just, I, it's the worst pain. And I've been, you know, Willow Creek. I went there for for eighteen years, and you know, I mm. had a awesome Christian therapist. And um, but you know, there's, I don't know if therapy could help you with this one. 
I think there's got to be something deeper. Well, l- let me tell you. Um, are you are you in therapy now? I am once a week. Mm-hmm. Okay, good. Because here's how, it, mm-hmm. I, and I agree with you. I think there's more than you know. It's a much bigger, much bigger issue than just what therapy can address. But I think therapy can address some of it. So I would encourage you. You're probably already doing this, but I would encourage you along a couple lines. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot of times the degree to which we fear something that has happened to us is also related to the where we are in the process of having the grief work really done. Because, mm-hmm. you know, th- th- that's a process. It, I don't know if you ever mm-hmm. would fully get, get done with this, but but when we have, you know, you have a trauma like that, the, the the closer you know the closer we are to the bigness of it that we're carrying around is we're kind of like, you know sort of oh, oh did, yeah. wait so, you, you know and, and it's called hypervigilance yeah. you know and that actually yes. gets activated yeah. inside of you mm-hmm. by mm-hmm. in part some of the emotion that's still there needing and wanting to come out and the thing about mm-hmm. the thing about a loss that's significant is it's not like your normal little you go through the months or the year or two years of grieving or whatever. It's also and mm-hmm. here's here's what I want you to recognize about this. The, sometimes the longer we get from an event that's that deep and that profound, mm-hmm. it, it's the actual time that you've gotten far enough away from it that actually causes more of it now to have permission to come up. And so it yeah. may be something in your therapy that you want to say, you know what, I think I need to revisit some of this. Of yeah. what it actually Yeah, we do. Life. And, and they actually are very, very good. Um, they, we do revisit it when, you know, it's, I feel safe to bring it up. Um, good. I'm, I feel safer to bring up the, the things of the past and how can I not let this affect me as much? And what does hypervigilance mean? What does PTSD look like? What does this yeah. look like when I have this well, reaction? Part or- of it, part of it is, part of it is the unprocessed grief. So I would encourage you, mm-hmm. I would really encourage you to in therapy, talk to your therapists about, should we be looking at this more deeply? You know, should I be focusing mm-hmm. on this a little more deeply? Now, on the practice yeah. of the hypervigilance stuff, mm-hmm. what what you can also do, and your therapist can can help you with this, is is sometimes what you're going to do. It's going to be driven by a lot of thoughts, right? And so, yeah. so you've got yeah. to begin to recognize what are the thoughts that are the triggers, and when those thoughts come in, oh, something's going to happen, or you know, or, you know and, and something happens like that. What mm-hmm. until until you work on this, what's going to happen is the natural pull is going to be to follow those thoughts down to mm. the event, mm-hmm. down to where they can take you in your imagination. So what I would right. suggest working on, yeah, exactly, yeah. working on there in therapy is learning some some actual thought blocking techniques where when mm-hmm. one of those comes, you recognize it, not going to go there and you immediately immerse yourself in the yeah. moment and in the present, because what keeps, yeah. what keeps harmful fantasized imaginations from gaining root is a deep involvement in the present moment. And the more you can mm, begin it to is, stay, yeah. Yeah. that's where a lot of this, a lot of this power is. And so I would do that yeah. as well. As all, and and also, yeah. and this is gonna this is gonna sound cheesy to you, okay? Because it it's is. Okay, Consid- go go for it. <laughs> okay. Well, considering what you've been through, the last thing I want to be is mm-hmm. a band aid shallow thing. But this really is profound. Mm-hmm. In that, you know, the Serenity Prayer, right? I do, I do. And I would write that on a piece of paper with columns. And here's what I can do. Here's what I have control of. Here's what I don't have control of. And surrendering what I don't. And knowing that I can do what I can do with my kids. 
And there are a lot of things you can do yeah. and equipping them and training them and taking care of, you know, that all of that stuff. And then the things yeah. we can't control, <laughs> that's where we have to really work on the surrendering. And I don't, a hard part. <laughs> It is a hard part, and and I'm going to leave you with this. And I, I, and this might be, you know, there are people that would disagree with this, um, <laughs> because because they want to have a more concrete faith than I'm going to suggest. Mm -hmm. um, I do have okay. a very concrete faith. It's very literal. I believe, I believe God. I believe He does things. I believe I've seen Him do things. I've seen Him do miracles, literal physical miracles. I know. <laughs> that he is real and he does stuff. Okay. But okay. I also know <laughs> sometimes he doesn't. Oh, yeah. Okay. I when know. He, he doesn't when he could have. Right. And that's what hurts and, you. I, you know what? I, I think that it's okay. <laughs> Um, yes, it hurts, <laughs> but I do know that he loves me and I, I'm here today and I such a sweet soul. I think I'm a great mom and I don't know where I got that from. I, I know where I got that from. <laughs> um, there's just some things I need to work on, but, you know, even just acknowledging that, is it's such a great thing. I realize that yeah. now. Um, that's what makes me a gift to my children, and them to myself. Yeah. And um, well, I um, I would yeah. like to. Okay. I'd love to be one of those people that say, you know, I just trust God so much. I know He's not going to let anything happen to my kids, or He's not going to let any. Well, oh gosh, that, yeah, I, wish you could say that. <laughs> I wish I could say that too. And so what I, but I can't because it's just not true. You know, when we trust him, it ultimately, I mean, where I've had to get to, because I know God lets some bad crap happen. And I don't know why. I don't know why. Yeah. But here's my problem. I know that he's real and I know that he loves me and I know this other stuff happens. So there's something about that I don't understand. And where I've had to get to, yeah. maybe, the, maybe this will help you. Uh, okay. I can't. I trust him that he loves me and he's not going to let anything happen that ultimately he's not, you know, in charge of and, and, and blah, 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 blah. And he, you know, and sometimes evil people do stuff. And I know sometimes he doesn't interview, all of that kind of stuff. But here's where I've had to get to in this, that I don't know. I don't know what he's going to allow or not allow. So I can't just trust everything's going to turn out like I want it. But I can trust one thing. And this is where yeah. I think the book, this is where the book of Job takes us. That Yes, the gentleman know, mentioned Job. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. I know, I know he, I know he's good and I know he knows more than I do. And whatever mm -hmm. happens, mm -hmm. I can always trust that whatever I have to go through, I won't be alone. He will be with me. <laughs> yeah. And that's something okay, so I have, we can yeah. depend on. We can depend so on. So I've got homework. <laughs> got some homework. I've got to read again. I wish, I wish <laughs> and, we could talk yeah, longer. There's so because... much about you that I would love to unpack. You know, the <laughs> foster homes and group yeah. homes, and you turn into this kind of great mom. It's the kind of ending we would love to hear for everybody that starts oh, out behind the eight ball like you did. So. I wish we had more time, yeah. but thank thank you for your it's call. Okay. I hope you call me back sometime. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Can my son say okay. goodbye real quick? My Yeah. You. Say goodbye. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks for Bye. joining us. Come back and see us. <laughs> oh, gosh. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know how it gets to be harder than that. I mean, obviously, there's many, many hard things. But I got to put losing a child as right up there at the top of the list. I've had friends that have had to bury their kids, and it's just not, just throws everything upside down. It's not the way it's supposed to be. And if you know anybody that's gone through that, 
then um, be nice to them. They need it. It's brutal. It's brutal. 